Welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Ecklebarger. Today we get to enjoy the first regular episode of our new Monday series, The Aldrich Family. This is the 15th episode of The Aldrich Family after it began its regular run as its own 30-minute show. Hopefully someday, somebody, somewhere will find those first 14 episodes But until then, this is the first one we have. This show is entitled Girl Trouble, and it originally aired on October 10th, 1939. Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother! Aldrich Family, written by Clifford Goldsmith, featuring the Broadway stars Ezra Stone and this week's special guest, Betty Field. Brought to you by Jell-O Puddings, those delicious new desserts all America's talking about. The Aldrich Family arrived on Broadway this week in the hilarious, successful Paramount picture, What a Life. It's truly a four-bell movie, and we urge you all to see it. Tonight, we are pleased to present one of the stars of the motion picture, Miss Betty Field, who will play Barbara Pearson, Henry's sweetheart. As usual, the part of Henry Aldrich is played by Ezra Stone. The scene opens in Barbara's home. It is early evening. Grandma? Grandmother? Well, yeah, Barbara. Henry Aldrich hasn't come yet, has he? Just a minute, and I'll ask your father. Uh, no, he hasn't, Barbara. First time this week he hasn't been here. Father, could you come here a minute? Where are you? I'm here in the front hall. Well, well, what is it this time, Barbara? Now listen, Father. I don't want Grandmother to hear me. Why don't you want me to? Oh, no reason. Father. Yes? When Henry comes, would you do something for me? Well, what is it? I know it's awful, but I've got it all planned. I found out today Henry is seeing an awful lot of Constance Marshall. Who told you? Constance herself did. I see. But Father had even seen them together. Charles, where's that box of candy we had around here last night? I haven't any idea. Father, when Henry does come, would you mind stepping into the room just once or twice and saying George Bigelow wants to speak to me on the telephone? Well, I... You will, Father, won't you? I'm just a bit surprised, Barbara. Father, it wouldn't be so terrible, would it? Don't you think I'm human? Barbara, I still think it'd be much better if you got your grandmother mixed up in this. But, Daddy, Grandmother wouldn't approve of it. You know she wouldn't. And exactly what makes you think I do? It's for Henry's own good, Father. Constance Marshall is so silly. Barbara, young ladies don't go about deliberately making young men jealous. Oh, but they do. I beg to differ with you. Well, sir, I'd give my eye teeth for a piece of that candy. Still had my eye teeth. Charles, somebody's at the front door. Please say yes, Father. Well, I'll think it over. That's practically yes. Tell Henry I'll be right down. Well, how do you do, young man? Well, how, how do you do, Mr. Pearson? How, how are you this evening? Splendid. And uh, uh, how is Mrs. Sanderson? She's splendid. No, she's not either. My digestion's terrible. Is that you in there, Mrs. Sanderson? Charles, tell Barbara Henry's here. I've been asking all evening where Henry is. Has she? No, I haven't. Grandmother. I had to stop for a second and see somebody on the way over, Barbara. Oh. Don't you want to put your hat and that package down? I'll put my hat down, but I think I'll keep the package. Don't you trust us, Henry? Oh, I don't mind holding it. It only weighs two pounds. What's in it? Oh, just a little something. Well, <clears throat> Mr. Pearson, how, how do you find business? Very good, Henry. You know, my father was saying... Uh, that... Will you excuse me just a moment, Henry? That's all right. Henry, I went over to my doctor's today. Is that right? And I can't eat one blessed thing. Is that right? And I can't remember when I went to sleep last. Hello, Henry. Oh, hello. <laughs> well. Here, 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 here's a package for you. Uh, be careful when you take it. It weighs two pounds. Oh, you shouldn't have done this, Henry. Well, aren't you going to open it? All right. Um, 
Who did you drop in to see on your way over, Henry? Mm, nobody in particular. It wasn't Constance Marshall, was it? Oh, all she wanted me to do was drop in and say hello. Oh. She's a nice girl. Uh, Barbara? Yes, Father? You're wanted on the telephone. Who is it? It sounded like George Bigelow. George Bigelow? Again? Oh. Will you excuse me, Henry? Sure. You mean you're going without opening it? I'll be right back. Uh, certainly strange. I didn't hear that phone ring. Mrs. Sanderson, did... Did Mr. Pearson say George Bigelow? He did. George Bigelow. Tell me, what do you honestly think of George? I'll tell you the truth, I don't think of him at all. Oh. What do you think of him? Oh, you can't get me to say anything against him. It's very honorable of you. You know, I said to Barbara only the other day, young lady, I said, I hope you appreciate what kind of a young man Henry Aldrich really is. Is that right? Oh, my, yes. And what did she say? Uh, I forget now. Oh. Well... I certainly hope George doesn't call again. George fine? He's very fine. Glad to hear that. Uh, certainly wish I could say as much about myself. Uh, don't you think you'd feel better if you went up to bed, Grandmother? When are you going to open that candy? I'm opening it. Candy, Grandmother? Hmm. Uh, well, just two. Candy, Henry? Oh, <laughs> I didn't even know you were there. Thank you. Uh, very good. Even if they do have enough. Shall we uh, step out onto the front porch, Barbara? No. Don't go out there and catch pneumonia, right? To prime your lives. Or well, couldn't Barbara put on a coat, maybe? Oh, Barbara? Yes, Father? Telephone. I think it's George Bigelow again. My goodness. I guess he just thinks I don't have anything else to do. Excuse me, Henry. Uh huh. I must be getting deaf. Henry, do you hear any phone ring? No, ma'am. Who are you? With I? Hmm. Uh -huh. Whatever it is. Don't you do something about it? Well, what is there I can do? Oh, it's worth having. It's worth having, ain't it? You mean... You mean I ought to pound the daylights out of George? Oh, he's out of him or out of Barbara. How? Well, then you can lay your hands on. That reminds me. Hand me that candy. Well, gee, if Barbara likes George, I don't see how socking him is going to help any. Well, certainly make you feel better, won't it? Even if he's older than I am? Listen, young man. I used to be as pretty as any of them in my day, and I know all the tricks of the trade. Yeah, did you used to fight? When the occasion demanded it, yes. Hey, are these all caramels? No, ma'am. Now, let me tell you something. If you want to make her sit up and take notice, only way to do is to make her jealous. You mean, when she comes into the room, I don't pay any mm -hmm. attention to her. I just sit and talk to you. Well, is that the way they do it in the movies? You mean I should make her think I like somebody else? No, I'm telling you. Not as a grandmother, but as one soldier to another. Get busy and get busy quick. Yes, ma'am. Here. Want to eat the half of this one? It's got nuts in it. My goodness. George Bigelow, he wants to give me his class pin. Can you imagine such a thing? Well, <clears throat> I'm late as it is. Where are you going? No place. I, I just told Connie when I dropped in I'd be right back. Oh, um, I'm sorry I didn't tell George he could come over. No, why don't you call him back? Well, of course. Maybe I will. <laughs> if his phone ain't wore out. Henry, what's that you're putting on the lapel of your coat? Uh, oh, nothing. <laughs> Just a pen of Connie's he asked me to wear. Where'd she get it? Uh, her mother had it first. It's an old family heirloom. Let me see what it says. Vote the temp Democratic ticket. Yeah, yeah, the, the whole family comes from a long line of Democrats. Oh. I'm sorry you have to go, Henry. Well, um, maybe I can stay. I'm telling you, Henry Aldrich, you're making the mistake of your life. But, uh, well... But, Grandmother, I don't think we should force him to go. Henry? Well, I, I, I guess I have to go, Barbara. Mm. Goodbye. Goodbye. I, um, I don't suppose we'll see very much of you from now on, will we? Why not? Oh, 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 yeah. I guess as time goes on, you won't. Hmm. Well. Uh, Barbara, you're wanted on the telephone. Who is it? You better go to George. It's uh, Constance Marshall. She's over at somebody's house and wants you to come over. Is that right? Oh, I'll answer it in just a minute. Who is this Constance Marshall? Constance Marshall is nothing but an NTS. W what's an NTS? NTS is necktie straightener. Every boy she meets, she has to straighten right away. Charles, who is Constance Marshall? Constance Marshall's father is one of the most active Republicans in this state. <gasps> is that right? I think I'll be going. I know what you're going to do, Henry Aldrich. 
You're not going to Connie's house at all. But I am. Oh, no, you aren't. You're really going to some other girl's house. I hope whoever she is, you have an awful time there. But listen. No, I won't. I hate you, Henry Alder. Young man, get out of this house. But, Mrs. Sanders... And don't you ever dark in this doorway again. With chocolates filled with nuts and raisins. Get out! Yes, ma'am. Constance. Where are you going? No place, just to the grocery store. Henry Aldridge, look at your necktie. I know it's crooked. I, I wear my tie like that purposely. Please let Constance help you. Not so tight. Do you want to strangle me? How do you do, Henry Aldridge? Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Sanderson? How do you do, Mrs. Sanderson? How do you do, young lady? Where are you going? I'm going to the doctor. Would you like to have me walk along part way with you? Oh, do you have to go now, well, Henry? Gee, I'm late as it is. Tell you what I wish you'd do, Henry. Stay right where you are. Here? Yes, sir. Barbara will be along just a minute or so. Wish you'd tell her where I've gone. But my mother's waiting for the groceries. Do you want Barbara to walk the streets of this town looking for me? Now, you stay right here, as I tell you to. And you, young lady, you stay here and see the... Oh, yes, Mrs. Sanderson. And you tell her if I'm out to the doctor's, I'll be right across the street from there getting a bag of candy. Henry Aldridge, look at your head. Listen, Constance. You know, you could be one of the cutest boys I've ever known. Cute? I'm cute? Hmm. <laughs> How do you think I'm cute? Oh. oh, Henry, you've got the cutest lock of hair right up there. What's the matter with it? <laughs> Every time I push it down, it goes right up. Oh, <laughs> Look at it. Down, up, down, up. <laughs> How do you do, Henry? Oh. Where did you come from, Barbara? No place. Your grandmother wanted me to tell you she's gone to the doctor's. I know where she is. Oh, well, what did she want us to wait here and tell you for? I should like to add, Henry Aldrich, that you are certainly making a spectacle of yourself out here in the street. I am? No self-respecting person would have his hair combed by a girl right out in public. Listen, Barbara, I'll have you know I'll have my hair combed wherever I want. And what George Bigelow said about you is absolutely true. What did he say about me? Never mind. He said you. He said... I hope sometime he tells you what he said. Well, what do you know about that? Gee whiz, anybody think I'd struck her? Henry, if I were you, I'd never speak to her again. Oh, I hope you don't think I'm going to speak to her again. Henry, would you like to come over to my house tonight? Gee whiz, I'd be glad to. Mm -hmm. I'd be glad to. I think it would do me good. Okay. <laughs> Before Henry Aldrich comes back, I want to say that if you happen to have an active, growing boy in your family, I know one thing. I know that you're kept plenty busy feeding that boy because youngsters that age are always hungry, always on the lookout for something good to eat. Well, now, here's a dessert that every boy and girl, too, will say is a real smoothie. The new Jell-O Butterscotch Pudding. It has a swell, tempting color like gold-colored taffy. It's smooth and luscious, and it just can't be beat for real flavor. As rich and delicious as old-fashioned butterscotch candy. Jell-O butterscotch puddings bring you real downright homemade goodness. And best of all, it's quick and easy to make. It takes you only a few minutes. There's no fuss or trouble. You just can't go wrong. Then try Jell-O chocolate pudding. With that wonderful real chocolate goodness, smooth and satisfying. And Jell-O vanilla pudding, cream-colored and tempting, with nuts or fruits folded in to make it even more delicious. All three new Jell-O puddings have that homemade richness you love. So try them all. Ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O butterscotch, chocolate, and vanilla pudding. Back at the Aldrich home, we find the whole family seated at the breakfast table. Uh, everyone, that is, uh, except Henry. Mary, do you know whether Henry's up yet? He said he was getting up the first time you called. Father! What is it? 
Father, will you please tell Mary that if she sees Connie Marshall go by to flag her? Aren't you all dressed yet, Henry? Practically, Mother. My goodness, all Henry can think about is Constance Marshall. How is it he never sees Barbara Pearson anymore? Her grandmother won't let him near the house. What's the trouble? I don't know, except she said something about his going too far over something. And did I tell you about the picture I found under Henry's pillow? Of whom? Barbara's grandmother? Of Connie Marshall. And down in the corner it said, Constance to others, but constantly to Henry. Doesn't that make you positively ill, Mother? Please pass the salt. This whole business is something I shall never understand. Oh, forget it. By next week, you'll be over the whole thing. Mother! Yes, Henry? Have you any idea where my trousers might be? I thought you were all dressed. I am, Father. All but my trousers. They seem to be missing. Where did you wear them last? I think it was when I went to the movies. Don't tell me you left your trousers at the movies. Wear your brown trousers, dear. My brown trousers? But Mother Connie doesn't like those. She even tells him what clothes to wear. The next thing you know, they'll be announcing their engagement. It may be of interest for you to know that this is not one bit funny. But, Mother, I think it would be all right with Constance. How do you know? I heard her tell Henry only the other day that she believes in long engagements. (laughs) Well, this would have to be a good long one because Henry still has a year and a half of high school and... Six years of college before he even begins to practice law. She may even talk him out of becoming a lawyer. Mary, you certainly are cheerful this morning. Mother, look out through the window. Look at what I see. Constance Marshall. Constance Marshall? She even comes here for breakfast now. Well, they selected a very excellent name for that child. (laughs) Hello, Mary. Hello. I wondered whether you'd like to have me walk to school with you. Come on in, Constance. I guess you know my father, don't you? (laughs) How do you do? How do you do? My goodness, Mr. Aldred, you look like Henry. I? Only, of course, an awful lot older. Uh, Yes. Shall we start now, Constance? Has Henry left yet? Not yet. Where is he? We have no idea where he is. You mean, Mr. Aldridge, Henry has left home? Apparently, he has. Constance, Henry's upstairs. We only think he's upstairs. No one in the family has seen him. We have simply heard sounds that might have come from Henry. Henry! Henry! You see? What did I tell you? Is somebody calling me? There's somebody down here to see you. Who is it, Mother? Oh, somebody. You mean to see me? Yes. I know who it is. It's speaking Cameron. Hi, Stinky. Henry! I'll be down just as soon as I find my pants. Henry, it's not Stinky, and even if it were, I don't think you should call him that. Oh, he doesn't mind. Tell you, Stinky. Henry! Father, come the corn up and help me find my pants. Henry, you're disgracing the entire family. In fact, it might interest you to know that Constance is down here. Yeah? <laughs> so's General Grant. Hello, Henry. Well, gee whiz, where did you come from, Connie? Home. Well, why didn't anybody tell me? I'll be right down. Henry, have you got your trousers on? Oh, no, I'm glad you spoke about that. Excuse me. You better be starting, Constance. Oh, we've got loads of time, Mary. Not unless you want to be as late as Henry is. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Mr. Aldridge. <laughs> Goodbye. Charming young woman. Oh, my goodness, Sam. I hope you'll get over it. You must remember, however, that someday somebody is going to marry that young woman. Mm, But it certainly isn't going to be Henry. It would be just our luck to have it be Henry. Wait for me, Mary. Wait for me. They've left, Henry. They've left without me? Well, of course. Well, goodbye, everybody. Come back here and eat your breakfast. But, Mother, do you want me to run right on top of a hearty meal? I want you to come back to this table. Where did you find your trousers? That's the strangest part of it. I found them on a chair in my room. Mm, on a chair? Yeah. Uh, Henry, where did you meet this Constance? I was a fine yuck to her. Henry, don't you think you should swallow your food before you talk? Yes, Mother. I'll learn- answer you in just a minute, Father. There. I was assigned next to her. In what way? My seat. My seat in assembly. Oh, I see. Why were you asking? I was just wondering, what does her father do? He's an exterminator. He's a what? Just a minute. He's an exterminator. An exterminator? No matter what you have, even if it's rats, you call him and he'll get rid of them. Henry. That's right, Mother. He's, he, he'll get rid of any kind of pest there is. He has never shown any disfavor toward his daughter? Don't you like Constance? Henry... In the past, your father and I have always permitted you to know anyone you wanted to. But 
somehow we don't care for this Connie. Why not, Mother? Well, putting it bluntly, you're much too nice for her. <laughs> Mother, don't be absurd. Well, until she came along, I didn't care how I looked. Now look at me. Remember that bunch of hair that, that always used to stand up? Now I keep it calmed down. And to tell you the truth, I miss that lock of hair. I miss it very much. You don't think I look improved? Oh, Henry, dear, when are you coming to your senses? In what way, Mother? Well, for one week now, you haven't touched your homework. You can't eat your meals. Well, you... I, I don't need food. Whatever became of Barbara Pearson? Barbara Pearson. Of course. She would. Well, she was all right when I was young, Mother. You uh, grew old seven days ago? I certainly changed since then. In what way, aside from putting Vaseline on your hair? In a lot of ways, Father. Well, just remember, son, we wouldn't have you lose your head for anything. Is that clear? Yes, Father. Now I run on to school. Yes, sir. Only, only you've got the wrong idea about Constance. I'm quite sure one of us has. Goodbye. Goodbye. So long. Sam Aldrich, I'm worried sick. Oh. Alice, you're worrying about something that's absurd. Sam, I didn't want to say anything about it before. I, I usually don't read anything that belongs to Henry, but I picked up a note Constance wrote him, and Sam, she isn't his kind. Well, why didn't you tell me there was more to it? Well, what I want to know is what we should do. Give him some castor oil and send him to bed. Well, that's what I thought you'd say. I know what I am going to do. What? I'm going to handle this the way the psychologists say a parent should. Now, Alice, if I were you, I wouldn't start fooling around with psychology at a time like this. But it's common sense, Sam. If we forbid his seeing the girl, it's simply a challenge. So the thing for us to do is to tell him that he may see her just as much as he wants to. Which is what he's doing anyhow. But we should invite her to dinner, Sam. Invite her here to dinner? Well, of course. If he sees enough of her, he'll grow tired of her. You hope he will. I'm sure he will. And on next Saturday night, we're having her and some of his other friends here for dinner. Hiya, Connie. Henry. Henry, do you like my dress? Yeah, it's very pretty. I've got to see who's at the door. Oh, I let them in. It was George Bigelow and some other girls. Oh. Henry, let Connie straighten your tie. You always yank it so tight. The other night, I had to go to sleep with it on. Oh. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Aldridge? How do you do, Constance? We're very glad you could come. How do you do? You'll find my family in the living room. Papa has to leave early. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He's got to go on a big job for somebody. You don't say so. This is the third time he's been there. He just nicely gets them out, and they always come back. Mm. Sam, come along. Henry, wait and talk to Connie. Yeah, I've got to go and see my guests. Are they more important than poor little I? No, but I ought to go in and say hello to them. Henry. Henry, look at me. Oh, you've got the bluest eyes Connie has ever seen in her life. Yeah? Oh. Excuse me for interrupting. Oh. Got something in your eye, Henry? Uh -huh. Gee whiz, Mrs. Sanderson. Hello, Henry. Henry, you didn't tell me Barbara was coming. No. Well, I understood this party was for me. I'm going in the other room and tell your mother what I think of it, Henry Aldrich. <laughs> Henry. I know I shouldn't have come, even if your mother did say I should. But I'm glad to have you. I'm glad to have both of you. Well, I'm not staying. I just came to make sure she got here. Where's your mother? In the next room. I'll just slip in and say hello. See whether maybe there's a little candy around. Uh, well, I see Constance has been fixing your tie again. How can you tell? It looks so nice. It doesn't look like you. No. When I came in, she was just going to straighten your eyes for you, I guess, wasn't she? Listen, Barbara, please. Henry, would you mind very much if I went home? Henry, aren't you going to come in and join your guests? Yes, Father, we're coming. George Bigelow says he hasn't even seen you. <gasps> George Bigelow? Henry, I can't go in there. Why not? Because I can't. Please let me go, Henry. But I want you to stay. Henry, I've got to tell you, those telephone calls I had from George... They weren't from George at all. Well, who were they from? Nobody. I just did it to make you jealous. Was that your grandmother's idea? No. It was mine. Wasn't it ridiculous? Barbara, oh, come in here. They got cakes with every kind of icing you can think of. No. Henry, your mother wants you. I'll be there. She wants you now, right away. Yeah, but can't she wait a second? No. Now then, young lady, 
If you want Henry Aldridge, you will stay here where you can keep an eye on him. I'm not going to stay. You want to upset me even more than I already am? I can't help it. I'm going home. Barbara, wait. No. Well, you've got to come in, dear. It wouldn't be a party without you. Why not? For any number of reasons. But look at my eyes. They're a sight. Tears, my dear, only make you prettier. I know from experience. Do you really think so? Sleep yet? Of course. <laughs> I've been thinking about that party. <laughs> I knew said I didn't understand psychology. Oh, I didn't say that. I said you were taking a gamble. Mm, just think we won't have to worry about that awful Constance Marshall or the idea of Henry's ever giving up law or getting engaged before he leaves high school. Oh, well, yes, it's, uh, it's usually work out for the best. Mm, provided naturally. you give him a little assistance. By the way, have you heard Henry come in yet? Don't believe I have. Oh, my goodness. What time is it? It's, uh, by the clock on the bureau, it's ten minutes to two. Sam Aldrich, Henry has never stayed out this late before in his life. I thought you weren't going to worry anymore. Oh! Henry, is that you? Yes. Where have you been, Henry? No place. I just walked home with Barbara, and then I had to wait until her grandmother went to bed. Come in here and say good night to us. I want to thank you for the swell party. Barbara said she had a very nice time. Sit down here on the edge of the bed. Henry, you're sitting right on my ankle. I'm, I'm sorry, Father. I didn't know it was there. Where did you think it would be? Henry, move your head over toward the light from the door. What for? Oh, Henry, I could almost cry. Why? That old lock of hair. It's standing straight up again. Yeah. She lets me wear my necktie so I can breathe, too. Mother, would you mind my asking right from the shoulder? What, dear? Well, would would you and Father be disappointed if if I didn't study six years to become a lawyer? Why not? Oh, no particular reason, Father. Just asking. Henry Aldrich, you aren't thinking of getting married, are you? Oh, no, Mother, no. We think you should wait until you're at least through high school. Don't you? Well, Alice, you certainly understand psychology. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once there was a husband who was very fussy about his desserts. He liked puddings, but only the kind of puddings that his wife made for him. Well, of course, it's a lot of work to make good puddings, so this man's wife decided to play a little trick on him. What happened? Well, the wife who wrote us about this is right here in person, Mrs. Florence C., who lives at 25 Hillside Avenue, Washington Heights, New York City. Uh, here's your letter, Mrs. C. Would you read us the rest of what you wrote, please? Certainly, Mr. Von Zell. I decided to try jello chocolate pudding. It only take it only took me a few minutes to whisk it up, and when supper time came, there it was. A big bowl full of rich, creamy, smooth chocolate pudding. Well, my husband came right back for the second helping. Said it was the most delicious pudding I had ever made. So then I told him about it. Told him that I had used the new jello chocolate pudding. He had to admit it surely was a success, every bit as delicious as the old-fashioned kind. Well, thank you very much, Mr. C. And ladies, that is the way to make a hit with your husband, too. For the new Jell-O puddings have that real old-fashioned goodness. Creamy, smooth, full-flavored, and tempting. But they're far quicker and easier to make. There are three delicious Jell-O puddings to choose from. Rich chocolate, mellow butterscotch, and creamy, delicate vanilla. Yes, you like all three new Jell-O puddings. Real old-fashioned puddings made a new-fashioned way. So try them tomorrow. Barbara? Yes, Henry? Are, are you sure your grandmother's going to bed? Thank heavens, she has. Well, uh, d do you mind my asking you something? What is it, Henry? Well, would, uh, would you like to go to a football game with me Saturday? Of course I would, Henry. If you go, Henry, I give you the money to get a seat for me. <laughs> well, Grandma's in again, but be sure to tune in again next week for further adventures of Henry Aldrich. The Aldrich Family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Tonight's special guest was Betty Field, star of the stage and screenplay What a Life, and she'll be back with us again next week. Original music is composed and conducted by Jack Miller. 
Harry Von Zell speaking and wishing you good night for those delicious new desserts all America's talking about. Jell-O pudding. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> In future episodes, I will provide commentary about the various actors in the show, but for the next few weeks, I want you just to enjoy the show and get to know the Aldrich family. I never cease to be amazed at how different life was 80 years ago, and yet, at the same time, how similar. Please send your questions and comments to host at classiccomedyotr.com, Come back next Monday for another episode of The Aldrich Family and check in on Wednesday for the next installment of The Bob Hope Show. Until next time, in the words of Martha Trolley Curtin, time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. <laughs>